Give God some praise. Give God some praise. He's worthy this morning. He's worthy. Has ever been a time that we need to be overcome by his presence? It is now, my brothers and my sisters. Amen. When folks are dying around us, when folks are leaving this world, we need his presence. Amen. When people are suffering and people are going through the things that they're going through, we need his presence. Amen. Among us this morning. Aren't you glad of that? Give the Lord a great hand of applause this morning. Let him know that you love the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. We love him. We appreciate him this morning. Amen and amen. Amen. I'll tell you what, boy. It's just good to feel his presence, isn't it? Hallelujah. I had been working on a message all week long. Had it together. Until yesterday over here praying around the altar. And Sister Alexandra, I felt his presence. When he stopped by to check on. Aren't you glad the Lord stops by and check on you? Hallelujah. Lord, I said, aren't you glad the Lord stops in and checks on you from time to time? Hallelujah. That's the experience I had yesterday in this place. So, as we just endeavored to just come by and spend some time alone with the Lord, with the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn with me in your Bibles this morning. I know we've been in the book of Acts, but I felt led to go back there again this morning. As the Lord spoke to my heart yesterday, so I don't have that message that I've worked on all week. But I do have the message that the Lord gave me for today. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Folks, let the Lord visit you this morning. Let him visit you this morning. Let him minister to you this morning. Whatever you have need of, just let him minister to you in this place of worship this morning. Hallelujah. Hell, I feel his presence here this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. The Bible said, And now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him and put him in prison and delivered him to four quarantines of soldiers to keep him, Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer, notice the last line. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Would you pray with us and pray for us? Father God, I honor you this morning. I thank you Lord for the great privilege of for the great opportunity, Lord, to stand before such a wonderful and beautiful congregation of men and women, Lord, today. Acknowledging, Lord, with this congregation today, there are many needs. There would be many prayer requests, Lord, as we heard earlier this morning. But, Lord, I realize and I acknowledge, Lord, that you're able and capable more than able. For the word said to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we could ask or even think according to the power that worketh within us. Uh I ask you this Sunday morning, Lord, to touch every man, every woman, uh, every boy, every girl uh, in this place under the sound of our voice. Uh, use us today, Lord, as a 
vessel uh, and a tool in the hand of the carpenter. Uh, use us today, Lord, uh, to speak forth the oracles uh, and the commands of Almighty God uh, that are written, Lord, uh, from Genesis 1 to the closing out of Revelation 22. Uh, I pray today, Lord, uh, let us be that vessel uh, unto honor, Lord, sanctified, uh, holy, uh, and meet for the Master's use, uh, prepared unto every good work. Uh, now, Lord, minister, oh God, uh, Lord, let that Holy Ghost anointing just to consume us uh, this Sunday morning, Lord. Uh, hallelujah, that we as the children of God uh, may worship you, uh, honor you, and love you this morning. Uh, save the lost today, Lord. Uh, draw with Holy Ghost conviction. Uh, bring them in, Lord. Uh, time is running out, I pray. In Jesus' name, and to God be all the glory. Amen. And amen. Shake a few hands front and back. Tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord. As I was praying, seeking the Lord... Yesterday, seeking Him, praying His will to be done. The Lord stopped in and visited with us, ministered to us, touched us in a special way. Something came to my heart I wanted to share with you today. And I titled this message, Come By Here, My Lord. I began to think of that, and Sister Kay, I thought about a song that came back to mind, and I went home and began to research it a little bit. Kumbaya. I hadn't heard of that since I was a little boy. But I began to research it. Kumbaya, my Lord, was first recorded by an out-of-work English professor, Robert Winslow Gordon. In 1927, Gordon went on his own to search for black spirituals and recorded the song, Come By Here, My Lord, sung by H. Wiley. The song was sung in a language called Gula on the Isles of South Carolina between Charleston and Beaufort. Come by here in Gula is Kumbaya, my lord. Gula is the Creole dialect spoken by the former slaves on those sea islands. Kumbaya, my lord. Someone is dying. Kumbaya, my lord. Someone is crying. Kumbaya, my Lord. Someone is singing, Lord. Korara Sambaya, Hora Kandeya Sito Rasa. My, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Someone is hurting. Kumbaya. My Lord, come by here, Lord, today. I begin to ponder the thought, Lord, that song is for all of those today that are oppressed, those that are sick in their bodies, those that are hurting, the dying, the lonely. Those that feel that they're all by themselves, that's that song. And in the 1950s, an American picked up that song. And it was beginning to be sung then by all of our Boy Scouts and our Girl Scouts of America. As they were sitting around the campfires at night singing that old song, Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. 
It was a song of peace. And they sung it in harmony. And then the little boys and girls began to sing that song. I I thought, Brother Williams, yesterday as I was praying and seeking the Lord. I said, Lord, if there's ever been a time in America that we need you to come by here. It is now, Lord, in the 21st century church in America, we need the divine presence of the almighty God, the kumbaya, my Lord. We need you to come by here and visit with us, to minister to us, to help us, to strengthen us, to help us to be able to carry on the work of the Lord because we're living in a time that I've never seen since the beginning of time and we'll probably never see again it's a day of adversity it's a day of problems it's a day where people are hurting it's a day where people are in need but I've come by to tell you there's a savior named Jesus there's a great God of glory hallelujah that has come by this way this Sunday morning at the Chatburn church of God of prophecy and he's come by to visit you and me I wonder this morning how many are singing Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Huh? You see, Robert Winslow Gordon was looking for a song that would comfort those slaves on those sea islands because they were there all by themselves. Huh? And they, he wanted to find a song that would minister to his people. And he found that old song, Kumbaya. And he sang it in the Gula. What are you telling me, preacher? There is no difference in 1927 when Gordon wrote that song than it is today in 2017. We may not be on an island this morning. Can I preach? We may not be there with the former slaves in 1927, but I see today in 2017, I see a church that's still hurting. I see a people that are still needing some peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding. I still see people that are hurting. I still see people that are lonely. I still see people that are crying out, Kumbaya, my Lord, I need you to come by this away right now. Here in Acts chapter 12. Story tells us about Peter. You know this story very well. Most do. Peter's been locked up in prison. We've been studying this now for what seems seems to be months in the book of Acts. Peter's been locked up. But people are praying for him. And I I believe they might have been saying, Kumbaya, my Lord, come by here. Our brother Peter has been locked up in prison. And we want to see brother Peter released. Anybody got any needs, any family members that need to be released this morning? Uh, I'm not talking about so much behind prison bars, uh, but I'm talking about behind those spiritual bars. uh, Hallelujah. That are holding them bound uh, to sin, uh, holding them bound to drugs and alcohol, uh, holding them bound, uh, amen, to adultery and fornication, uh, holding them bound, uh, amen, to the sins of this world uh, till they can't even lift up their head anymore. Hallelujah. Telling you today, as it pleased them, Oh, Herod, as he killed John, or James, rather, the brother of John with a sword, and it see as it pleased the Jews, and he proceeded further to take Peter also, intending after Easter to bring him forth and to do the same thing with brother Peter. But sometimes the Lord has other plans. 
Can I just take my time and preach this morning? Uh, you see, there are times, amen, that the devil thinks he's got us down. There are times that he thinks, Brother Jerry, that it's over with. You might as well throw in the towel and give up. Amen. And say it's done. But I've come by to tell you something this Sunday morning. If that's you, my brother, if that's you, my sister, and you feel like it's over with, amen, and you're locked up and you can't seemingly get out, I know one that does jail breaks, amen. I know one that breaks the cells, that breaks the prison bars, that releases individuals, amen, so they can be free for whom the Son is set free uh, is free indeed. Uh, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, uh, there is a liberty among us. Uh, I've come by to tell you something this morning. Uh, there was a prayer meeting going on, amen, uh, over at Mary's house. Uh, Mary and her friends and her sisters uh, were gathered together here in Romans uh, Acts chapter 12 uh, and they're praying for the release uh, of Brother Peter. Uh, they're, they're hurt. Uh, they're, 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 they're just messed up uh, because Brother Peter's been arrested uh, and he knows what Herod can do but you see they found something they could do I said there's a song said there's something we all can do and that is pray and call on the name of the Lord are you with me this morning do I have any prayer warriors in the house do I have anybody that knows how to get a hold of God and call upon his name in the time of your need are you praying kumbaya are you saying Lord I need you Lord come by here stop it my house. Uh, visit my children. Uh, go where my loved ones are and bring them in. Hallelujah. They're praying for Brother Peter that he would be released because they knew Herod had his eyes fixed on him and he was going to kill him. You see, because he saw it pleased the Jews taking Peter, delivered him to four quarantine, 16 soldiers to keep him Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer. Can I stop and tell you? Prayer is the strongest weapon that the church has today in our arsenals. Huh? I said it. Prayer is the key that unlocks that door. Huh? Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? Huh? I was over visiting the other day. Sister Candace is here. I'm, I'm glad she's here this morning. With Sister Marquine. As we prayed with her the other day. And just felt the presence of the Lord. Come into that room. Where a lady that should have been dead already. Is still hanging on. Those are one of those times we pray kumbaya, my Lord. Brother Williams, to come by here, Lord. Hey, this is my sister standing in the need of prayer. Her body's racked with pain. And according to the hospice nurses and doctors, uh, she's only supposed to live two months. I think they told me she's been living three months now. I, I called to check on her this morning, see how she was doing. Uh, and Sister Candy told me she's still hanging in there. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Why, preacher? Uh, we don't understand the doctors don't have a cure for that. Uh, they don't have a clue to what's going on. Uh, all they know that they know that they know is that, that she should have been dead. Uh, but I believe somebody's praying. Preach, Brother John, preach. I believe somebody's been praying. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. We need you, Lord. Stop in here and check on my sister a little bit. And doctor says she should have been gone. But Sister Ann, I've come out to let the doctor know something. There's a great physician. Luke said he is the great physician. He's the mighty God of Israel. He's the God of Peter, Paul, James, and John. He's the God of my forefathers. And he's the God of who I am. He's the God of today's church. He's the God of yesteryears. He'll be the God of tomorrow. He's always God. And he always will be God. Somebody praise him in the house. And give him glory and honor and praise and blessings. He'll always be God. In spite of our opposition. In spite of our problems. He will still be God. And they're praying for Brother Peter. Huh? Peter's released. I'm not going to do all that reading this morning there in this chapter. But I find out as they're praying, 
Kumbaya stops by. And he hears their prayer. And he stops in a prison cell. And he finds Brother Peter. Come on, church. Huh? Can I ask you a question? Has he ever stopped by and found you at your house? Has he ever stopped by in your crises? Hallelujah. God, I feel his presence right now. I feel him stopping by this Sunday morning. He's here to meet needs. He's here to change lives. He's here to visit the lonely and the oppressed, the hurting, the backslide, the lukewarm. He's here to visit you this morning. Huh? He stops by to see Brother Peter. And he hears in the distance, and I'm just paraphrasing this and then putting my words this morning. He hears a group of mamas praying. Hallelujah. Back at Mary's house. And they're praying for the release of Brother Peter. Because Peter's been in prison. And Herod plans on killing him. And they want their brother released. Amen. Listen, I don't have all the answers this morning. But I know who the answer is. I said I don't have all the answers to every question. But I know who the answer is. Hallelujah. I don't understand why bad things can happen over here and good things happen over here. I don't understand why James was killed. Amen. And Peter was spared. I don't understand all of that. Hallelujah. But I tell you one thing. One day I'll understand it better in the by and by. Come on somebody help me preach. Oh preach brother Mike. I come by the let you know he heard that mother's prayer he heard those sisters prayer brother Chris there at Mary's house and he stopped by and sent an angel I said come by y'all my lord come by here and he stopped in and saw where Peter was and he sent an angel by where Peter was and the Bible said he released him and let him go he thought he was in a daze and in a vision and Peter if you read that chapter had to shake himself when he went out through the third gate and realize I'm free I'm free I'm free I wish I had about five people that would stand up in this congregation and say I'm free preacher I'm free I'm free by the blood of Jesus I'm free because he visited me I'm free because he came by here I said I'm free because he brought me out of darkness I'm free Oh, you're free this Sunday morning. Worship God in this place. Free. Peter was free on that day. Understand. Mary and them don't know anything about Peter's release. Huh? See, today we got to get a Bell's bondsman. Y'all stay with me. Today we got to get a lawyer. Got to pay big money huh, for somebody to plead our case. Good God Almighty, Sister Yvonne. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But in Peter's case, he didn't have a lawyer, he didn't have a defense team. Team. He didn't have money to get a big lawyer, a big time lawyer. Oh, but he knew Jesus. How many know Jesus this Sunday morning? Oh, I feel the presence of him right now. Hey, I said, come on, how many know Jesus? You can do better than that this morning. How many know Jesus this morning? You see, yesterday, sitting down here praying to this altar, talking to the Lord, and all of a sudden, His presence just came in the room. I like that old song Brother Dill sings, Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Jesus is my doctor, and He writes out all of my prescriptions. Boy, if I knew that, I could sing. Praise God. 
I ain't no singer. Y'all know that, but I love to try every once in a while. Hallelujah. One day the Lord's going to let me sing in that heavenly choir. Glory to God. Amen. What are you telling me, preacher? Ah, you see down there yesterday, amen, Jesus came into the room, Sister Shirley, and, and all of a sudden te teardrops began to run down my cheekbones. And I, all I could say was, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Brother Small for coming by to see about me. I, I just stopped more or less praying and started talking. And I said, Lord, I just thank you. That you stopped by to check on old brother John this morning. I'm glad, Lord, you just loved me enough uh, to stop building mansions and commanding angels and, and ordering them around. Uh, hallelujah. And stop just long enough uh, to come by uh, and see where brother John's at uh, and sit down on the altar of prayer with me uh, and say, I'm with you, son. Uh, you don't have to be afraid. I'm here for you. I am the Lord thy God uh, and I am with thee. Uh, aren't you glad the Lord is with you? Uh, he bleeds Peter out of that prison, out of the 16 quarantines of soldiers. Amen. And he walks out of his own accord without a defense team, without a lawyer, without a trial. Have you ever been set free and you didn't even have a trial? Good God, I feel like preaching. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he walks out of his own accord. You can read all that chapter. I don't have time to cover it all. And I find him in just a little while. He's knocking. Where is he at, preacher? Read that chapter. He's at Mary's house. Prayer was being made without ceasing. They were praying at Mary's house. What are they praying for? Peter's release. And Peter's at the door knocking. If you don't want God to answer your prayer, don't pray it, honey. Huh? Are you with me this morning? Huh? If you don't want God to bless you, tell him to bless your pastor. Huh? If you don't want your million dollar inheritance, give it to the preacher. We'll make good use of it, won't we, preacher? Yes, sir. Uh, we know what to do with it. <laughs> you notice he said we're half at first. Amen. Ain't God good this morning? Huh? As he's knocking at the door, they're praying, and all of a sudden, a little damsel in the room named Rhoda. You can read it in there. Rhoda hears somebody knocking at the door. Man, they're praying. And she goes to the door and looks out the peephole. You know how y'all do at night when somebody's knocking on your door and it's 12 midnight? Ain't that right, Sister Doris? <laughs> I heard her story. <laughs> and she gets so hysterical, she, she calls laws and everybody, and she looks out the door, there's three carloads of laws in the yard. <laughs> and all the man won't do is be a blessing. <laughs> and she's fitting to have him arrested. <laughs> you know how we do. I won't tell all that story, sis. That's enough. And they're peeping out the hole and looking. Amen. I know what my wife will do. She'll grab me by the arm. She'll don't you go to that door. She don't care who it is. She said, you ain't going to no door that late at night. Huh? Somebody comes up during the day. I'm out there cutting grass or whatever, you know, working in the yard. She'll... She said, there's somebody out there. I said, yeah, yeah. You better not put them in that truck and take them nowhere. Because you might not come back. <laughs> huh? And I know she's just being precautious. Can you imagine Mary and them praying? Rhoda goes to the door and begins to look out. And she sees somebody she recognizes. It's Brother Peter. Now the last time she seen Peter, he was in prison. And now she sees him at the door. She don't unlock the door. She don't open the door. She runs back to where they're praying. Huh? Give me a little group right here. Come here, Brother Jody. Brother Terry, come here. Come here. Come here, Brother Chris. Y'all get down there on the floor. Huh? Come here, Sister Ella. I need some women here with them. Come here, Sister Zanary. Come on. Boy, y'all slow to be so young. Great day. Come on. Get down there with them. Y'all might have to help them up, the fellas. I want y'all to be praying. Huh? Come on. 
Is that the way y'all pray? Great. Yeah. Hey. I'm going to let them pray till they pray through. Huh? And they're praying. Y'all praying for Peter's release. Got to tell them what to pray for. Huh? And they're praying. And they're praying. And Rhoda's got some news. Come here, Sister Megan. This is Rhoda. Rhoda's got some news for them, folks, praying. I want you to go do what the Bible says. You know what this story's about? Uh, I'm putting her on the spot. Go over there and shake them and tell them Peter's at the door. Wait, go ahead, go ahead. They probably acted the same way. Thank y'all. Thank you so much. They probably acted the same way as this crowd was. They were shocked. They were surprised. Surely no, there's not Peter at the door. He's at prison. That's who we're praying for is Peter. Huh? Rhoda runs back to the door, opens the door, and it's brother Peter in the flesh. Huh? Kumbaya, my Lord. He had visited Peter. He'd heard Mary and him's prayer. And he went and got him out of prison and brought him to the house where they were praying. Can I stop and tell you, my brothers and my sisters, prayer will change your situations. Amen. Prayer will change, let me say that again, your situation. Huh? Don't let the situation change your prayer. Let your prayer change your situation. Huh? Don't tell God how big your mountain is. Tell the mountain how big your God is. Huh? Are you with me this morning? Are you with me, my brothers and my sisters? Huh? Peter shows up. He's been released. He's been set free without a trial, without a lawyer, without a defense team. He's been set free. You see, you and I all owed a debt we couldn't pay. Are you with me this morning? The Bible says that we were all born into sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Huh? We should all be in hell this Sunday morning. Are you with me? I know a lot of preachers won't preach this this morning, but I'm telling us the truth. We ought to be in hell I ought to be there number one huh? for the life that I lived, for the wrong that I had done. But you see, I, I remember over 30 years ago, kneeling down in my front yard in Maxton and saying, Kumbaya, my Lord. I wasn't in a church. But I had some loved ones praying for me. Because they knew I was bound in sin. Sister Carter, I was bound to cigarettes. I was bound to alcohol. Y'all know my story. I had natural light sitting in the refrigerator that morning. When all of a sudden a man named Jesus... Stopped by in a little town called Maxton where I knelt down as he sent a prayer warrior by my way that morning. And I knelt down in my front yard. You see, because I always had a testimony as a little boy when I was going to church and loving the Lord. I got something man didn't give me and man can't take away, but I lost it one day. When I went back out into a world of sin as a teenager. But now I got married. But you know, Brother Chris, I never got away from it. Listen to me, somebody here. This, I don't care how much beer I drank. I don't care how much dope I smoked. I never got away from the presence of the Lord. And he found me that morning. As I started saying, come by here, my Lord. 
come by here. And he stopped in, Sister Ann, and he saved my soul. Anybody remember the day the Lord saved you? You remember that day that the Lord saved you? Huh? I remember that day, was it about an hour later, my wife came home from getting groceries. And I told her the story. She knew something was wrong. She'd never seen me cry. I was too macho for that kind of stuff. But that day she seen me cry like a baby. You know, we said in Sunday school about old Zacchaeus. When the Lord changed Zacchaeus, it was instantaneously. Huh? He didn't have to work on me a week. Huh? Brother Jody, when he saved me that morning, he saved my soul. And I tell you what, I've been loving it ever since. Huh? My wife, I told her that day, I said, the Lord saved me. Hallelujah. I couldn't contain it, Brother Chris. I couldn't hold back the tears. I couldn't hold back the excitement. Hallelujah. And then later on, uh, uh, four or five years down the road, somebody had the endorsement, the endosity to tell me that one day I'll slow down. Uh, amen. And I wouldn't be so wide open. Amen. Uh, it's been nearly 32 years and I'm still wide open. Uh, I still love Jesus. Hey, are you with me this morning, children of God? Uh, you know why? Uh, because it just gets gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder every day a day with Jesus it just gets better and better all the time the songwriter said I just keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over and over again aren't you glad that every once in a while you'll say come back here Lord and the Lord will show up in the midst of your circumstance and make you a different individual you're glad. You see, kumbaya is for people like this woman in 1 Kings chapter 17. Huh? Stay with me just a little longer this morning. In verse 8 of chapter 17 of 1 Kings, this is what this is for this morning. You see, if you're here and you're like this this morning, it's for you this morning that I'm speaking to. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise and get to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have, committed, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as he was going, as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth. Listen now, church, listen. I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me, listen now, thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and make for thee and for thy son, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she... Listen, and he and her house did eat that day and die. What does it say? Shout it out. Many days. Many days. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? When the Lord of hosts comes by to visit you. He'll make sure you got a plenty. Are you with me this morning? He'll make sure he takes care of his own. Huh? You're looking at a preacher that's never went without. There has been some scarce days in serving the Lord. There's been days when I've had a can of pinto beans. Amen. Are you with me? And I still like them today, sister. Man filled them things up with ketchup. Great day in the morning. 
Huh? There was a few days there was pork and beans and grits. Boy, but it's good. Huh? Maybe that didn't have a ribeye or prime rib. Didn't have pork chop. Oh, but I had enough. Hey, day of the morning. Glory, hallelujah. Had enough. Glory to God. Elijah said, you go and do as I've commanded thee. And every day, I could just see her this, this morning, because I could just see her every day after that she did eat many days, the Bible said. And every time she went to that cruise of oil and poured it out, it looked like it was the last drop coming out of that cruise. Amen. But I see her go back on Tuesday, and she pours a little more out of the cruise. I see her go back on Wednesday and pour a little more out of the cruise. Has anybody ever been there this morning? I'm talking to you about kumbaya my lord come by this way my lord hallelujah can I tell you this Sunday morning the writer said what God blesses you can't curse it and what's been cursed you can't bless it I don't know about you but I'm blessed going in I'm blessed coming out I'm blessed from the rising of the sun I'm blessed to the going down of the same I am blessed do I have about 10 people that are blessed stand up and give God some praise because you are blessed above and beyond measure are you with me church are you with me this morning are you truly blessed huh? now some of you may not be like me I've been in a dilemma before whether to pay my tithes or pay the light bill Huh? Some of you may not have been there. I've been there, Brother Hunt. And boy, I thought about squirreling some of that money away. Huh? Brother Chris, that ain't what I did. I said, if I got to sit in the dark next week, I'm going to pay my light bill. I'm going to pay my tithes. And somehow, some way, the light bill get paid. I've been to the bank and checked my bank statement because there was some money in there I didn't know where it came from. <laughs> Woo! Huh? What do you mean, preacher? Somebody had made a deposit. Huh? I don't know how they done it. It ain't for me to question neither. All it is for me to know is to accept it as the word of God and believe that whatever I pray for, God is going to answer. It may not come today and it may not come tomorrow, but he's a God that always shows up on time. Amen. Has anybody ever been experiencing that? Amen. That he's God and he'll show up on time. He showed up for Peter. He showed up for Mary and her crew. I could go on and on and on. He showed up for Elijah. He showed up for that little widow woman of Zarephath. He showed up for Peter, Paul, James, and John. Huh? And can I stop and tell you, he'll show up for you this morning. He'll show up for you. You say, mate, you may be here this morning. You say, preacher, you just don't know my situation. You start praying, come by here, my Lord. Come by here, my Lord. I need you. I guarantee you he'll show up. There ain't enough of devils in hell to hold him back. When his people start crying out, come by here, my Lord. I don't know if you prayed that this morning before you came to church or not, but I did. I prayed, Lord, in some way, some form, come by this place this morning. Brother Kevin, because see, he already knows who's coming. He already knows he'll walk through them doors this morning. He already knows what need or situation you may be in. And you're needing him to come by here and visit with us a little while. Sister Ann, I don't know about others, but I need him more today than I've ever needed him before. I need him now. Anybody fought the devil this week? Come on, raise your hand. Be honest. Huh? We all do, folks. We all do. We fight him day in and day out.
And we just need Him to come by, my Lord, and visit with me. With his heart. Huh? Doesn't it feel good when He comes by? You know, you can go down and pray or whatever, boy, and you feel so bad. You can come to church and you may feel so bad. But then he comes by. Huh? When he came by Zacchaeus' sycamore tree. Come down, Zacchaeus. For this day I must abide at thy house. Huh? And Zacchaeus came down and made haste. And they went to Zacchaeus' house and he never left the same anymore. My wife asked me as we were sitting there this morning, she said, was that literal or spiritual? I said, Zacchaeus didn't know it was going to be spiritual. He knew it was literal because they went to his house. I said, but he didn't know it was going to be spiritual until that day he encountered a man called Jesus. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, if you're a backslider, I'm telling you, you don't know what you're missing this morning. Because when he comes by, he makes all the difference in our lives. Don't he, Brother Marty? Huh? He'll make a man that's sad glad. Huh? He'll make those that's lost be found. He'll give you a song in the midnight hour. He'll put a praise upon your lips. He made a way for that widow woman. and He'll make a way for you and I this morning. See, Robert William Winslow Gordon wrote that song because he wanted some peace for those former slaves on a sea island all along. If you need some peace this morning, you start singing that little old song, Kumbaya, my Lord. This is John. And I need you to come by, Lord, and meet with me in a little while. Huh? Whatever you're going through with this morning, I want you to stand all over the building with me this morning. There's more to this, but I'm going to just stop here just for a little bit. If you've been going through something this week, and I know we all do, but I'm talking about if you've just been really been going through something severe in your life. And you need the Lord just to visit you a little bit this morning to give you some spiritual strength, to give you some help, to give you some guidance, whatever you need. As Sister Kay comes to the piano, I want you to make your way out of that seat and just come down here and find you somewhere to pray. You see, as they were praying over at Mary's house because they had a need, and God answered that prayer, because they were crying out on behalf of Brother Peter. I wonder what your cry would be this morning. If you really just let go and let God. What would your cry be? As every head's bowed, every eye's closed. If you have a special need in your life. And you want the Lord to visit you today. Would you come to this altar? Would you come to this altar? Don't look around at your neighbor. Don't look around at your family. It's not about them. This is about you. As a child of God, as an individual, this is you. Come on, that's right, come on. Come on. You don't want to come by yourself, reach over and take a friend by the hand and tell them, would they walk with you down here this morning? Would they walk with you down here this morning? What about it, children of God? Listen, you're not in this thing by yourself. Not by yourself this morning. The Lord will meet you right here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Pray, children of God, those at your seat, pray along with them. Pray with them this morning. Kumbaya, my Lord. Come by here, Lord. Come by each and every individual's home. 
Some of them's got wayward children this morning. Lord, would you come by? Some of them's got children on drugs this morning. Lord, would you come by? Some of them, Lord, may be losing a loved one. Would you come by, Lord? Would you come? Lord, we need you. We need you, Lord. Come by, Lord. Come by, Lord. Come by, Lord. Lord. We need you this morning. We need you, Lord, this morning. Come by, Lord. Meet with your people, Lord. Minister to their every need. Help them, Lord, just to let go and let God be God. I pray in your name, Jesus. Pray all over this building, would you? Pray all over this building, mamas and daddies, loved ones. Would you pray? Would you pray?